The Colorado Avalanche have had a relatively quiet start to the offseason, or have they? There may be a little bit more going on behind the scenes. Kyle Sullivan of Locked On Avalanche is here to talk about that next on the Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Gil Martin here and welcome everybody to the Monday edition of the Locked On NHL Podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On NHL your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss a show. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. Still searching for a great candidate for your company? Don't search, just match with Indeed. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. It is my pleasure to welcome back to the show the co-host of Locked On Avalanche, Kyle Sullivan. And uh, Kyle, uh, you know... It hasn't been the busiest offseason so far for the Avalanche, but maybe there's a little bit more than meets the eye here. Let's start off with what has happened so far this offseason. What has happened is the Avalanche have they've made the moves they need to make to get a team on the ice. And let's if you're looking for news when it comes to the Colorado Avalanche on the ticker on the bottom of whatever sports channel you're watching, I'll tell you, you're not going to find it because there are two elephants that are hanging over the the room in Colorado, and that is the contract of Gabe Landeskog, and that is the contract of Larry Nachushkin. There's not a lot that the ads can do with those contracts right now, and both are huge question marks. The ads are currently over the cap, so by the time you hear this episode, something might happen where they get themselves back to cap compliance, but the ads are really having to go bargain hunting to put a team together. And that's why you see the Avs getting the boys back together, just going out and signing like TJ Tynan, former avalanche that know the system and that are on the cheap. You're not expecting a lot. You have Nathan McKinnon, Miko Rantanen, Kale McCarr. When you have those three, you're locked up and they signed Casey Middlestat. They, they made the proper moves to put a top six together. But when it comes to depth, it's, between the Colorado Eagles stepping up in preseason and training camp and these tiny little moves just to see what could possibly happen. So let's take those two, you know, shadows hanging over the Avs heads one at a time. What is going on with Landis Gog? Is it possible he's done as a player or is he going to give this another try? See, this is why you pick the right co-host of Lockdown Avalanche. If you ask my friend Chris Maselli, he would say, oh, just wait it out. The captain's coming back. He's said that last year and the year before. And for all the locked on NHL viewers, Gabe Landeskog has not played a shift of hockey since he lifted the Stanley Cup in 2022. That's right. That is a long time. We're going into year three. I am of the mindset that I don't think he can get back to NHL caliber hockey. He's going under experimental surgery to fix his knee that he was getting ready to and had a setback and had to readjust. So asking the captain to come back under that contract and not just play hockey, but play Colorado Avalanche hockey, which, by the way, it's built on speed on a on a shaky knee, that's a lot to ask. So the jury's still out on if he's going to actually make it back at the preseason press conference he had with General Manager Chris McFarlane he was still dodgy on when he's coming back and we're going into year three. So how long are the avalanche going to be waiting? It's the captain. Gabe Landeskog means everything to this team. So they're going to wait forever, but it's iffy on what he can actually bring when he comes back. Now, first of all, obviously if he's not ready, you have LTIR that will give you some cap relief, but that can't happen right away. No. And that's where McFarland Landeskog and honestly, Jared Bednar will have to sit down and have a conversation where, is this LTIR? Is this retirement? Can you do three more years? Like, there's a lot of questions that come around this surgery. And there's no guarantee that he's coming back to even be 40% or 50%. Everybody's 
kind of gravitating to these clips that you see of him on the ice for 10 to 15 seconds, taking very basic maneuvers on the ice. And we're all losing our mind that he's coming back. Just wait, he's coming back. That was littered through last season. And this is, again, year three. We're asking a lot of the captain. And he's also a smart guy. And if he can't do it, I think he knows the the state the team is in financially. And he will make the right decision. But will LTIR be used? I think it would be more retirement before LTIR. And is there a timetable at all for when an announcement may come? Well, <laughs> from Landis Gog himself, in the press conference, he turns and says, when does the season start? Somewhere between there and maybe December. And if we're going into year three, still saying maybe on a return date, that should tell you more than circling a date on the calendar. He still doesn't know. Yeah, it's it's got to be a very difficult situation for sure. And and how about the Chuchkin? What What's going on there? Oh, you tell me and we'll both know. Um, with Valerian Chushkin, he went to stage three, the player's assistance program during the playoffs. He took a hot test and was removed because he already entered the assistance program midseason. This is coming off of taking time away from the team in Seattle the year before during the playoffs. So Valerian Chushkin's had his off the ice battles, but the Avs really can't do much when it comes to this contract because General. Uh, manager Chris McFarlane, he said himself, they have explored every option on what to do with this contract. And there's nothing they can do be under the program until he's possibly reinstated in November. The season starts in October, everyone. November, that contract is sitting out there and they can't do anything about it, which also makes things weird because he is making an appearance back home in Russia playing in a, a charity league. And he's... So what the players program actually does and what it protects and what it's doing, I'm really not sure. But if you want to see Valery Nishushkin, he's back home in Russia playing hockey. But when it comes to what he can bring to the avalanche, it's nothing until November if he's reinstated. And if until he's reinstated, he does not count against the cap? That's our belief. Me and our my co-host, Chris Maselli, we are still, and the Avs management, we're still all kind of, unsure how this process is going and how it works and the legality on if they can walk away like what granite's uh contract termination the, there's a lot of questions that everybody's figuring out as they go and with it being the off season there's no press for importance here so the the abs are just understanding that he will come back in november and that's how they're operating if they keep him that's another question but those are between Landeskog and Nachushkin, they're acting like both of them are coming back. Well, how then do they address the remaining needs that this team has between now and training camp? Well, you expect maybe another move or two in the system. I know going into free agency, names like Ross Colton were thrown out there, Josh Manson and Sam Girard. So maybe one of those names are moved. It's interesting, especially with the moves they're making and all these tiny little pieces they're adding to the team. You're just automatically looking at the largest contracts on the team and where you're working from there. Keep in mind, next year, Miko Rantanen is up for a new deal as well. Yeah, going to be interesting to see how that plays out. And uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, this just sounds like a very difficult situation all the way around. Uh I mean, how does this affect the team psychologically? The players have got to have a lot of uncertainty hanging over their heads. Well, you, the team is optimistic, especially with the way they exited last season, feeling like they left so much on the table. And with the exit of Larry Nachushkin, it was a little bit galvanizing for some of the players. And you could hear in the comments that this team really bonded in the playoffs and you're expecting through this off season that they really band together and know it's going to be a tough season that you can't go out and sign a band-aid to get you to the trade deadline or to the end of the season until these contracts are dealt with so they're going to have to band together and you're expecting this team to be a little bit more resilient but they know help is not on the way it's on them all right well i know you and your co-host will have it covered every step of the way kyle why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners, where they can find the podcast and where they can find the both of you on social media. 
Well, you can find the podcast. We're on YouTube or anywhere you find your podcast. Just search Locked on Avalanche, where this week we're doing crossovers with all of our Central Division foes. So you get both sides of these matchups that you'll see all year long. So you can check us out there and you can check us out on all the socials. Just search Locked on Avalanche or you can find me anywhere you look at Shaggy Von Doom. All right, Kyle, thanks so much. Always a pleasure. It's always an honor, my friend. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. We're all driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with more than 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard it about Indeed on this podcast. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. 